Hey everybody, it's Michelle from Florida Keys Birding, and today we're talking about the painted bunting. So these birds are not difficult to identify. The males have a bright blue head, an orange eye ring, yellow and green on the back, and a red breast and belly. Its back is green and its wings can seem to mix purple, green, yellow, or blue. Females in juvenile painted buntings are also quite striking, a solid emerald green varying to almost a yellow or olive green sometimes. The first time I saw this bird at my feeder, I thought it was a tiny parrot or a lost pet because of its bright colors. The color helps them to hide in vegetation while incubating eggs or learning to fly. So some cool facts about the painted bunting is that its French name is non pareil, not <laughs> non pareil. I don't know. Um, I'll put it on the screen. I don't know how to pronounce it, um, which means without equal, a reference to the bird's dazzling plumage. The oldest record of a wild painted bunting was at least 12 years old as reported from a Florida banding study. The painted bunting is one of the most brilliantly colored and visually striking birds in all of the U.S. And it's the only bird in the U.S. to have a blue head and red underparts. Another cool fact about the painted bunting is the species name is Ceres, which comes from the Greek myth of Scylla. I guess <laughs> that's how you pronounce it who was turned into the bird Kyrus okay yeah lots of names that I've never heard before um, so that's pretty interesting um, in Greek mythology um, and the last cool fact is that a group of painted buntings are collectively known as a mural or a palette of buntings so I could totally see that because they do look like they came out of a cram box. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. So let's talk about migration. Um, they're short to medium distant migrants and western populations tend to migrate to staging areas in Arizona and north north western Mexico where they molt before continuing to Central America. This is actually an unusual phenomenon for a songbird. Um, this migration molt pattern is usually common between waterfowl but very rare between songbirds. So um, that's kind of an interesting fact. Eastern populations on the other hand will molt on the breeding grounds and migrate to southern Florida and some Caribbean islands in the fall winter time. Um, and they do migrate at night. So, you know, that's this time of year right now. Um, I just started getting painted buntings this week and last week. Um, I've got some at the feeder right now that are coming a few times a day. So we've got them here in the Keys. Um, so talking a little bit about habitat, the painted buntings will tend to breed in semi-open habitats like shrubs or trees. Um, they don't breed in the fall winter in South Florida so I never get to see that they will do that you know in the northern states um, but you can find them if you are in the northern states or in an area where they do breed you can find them in abandoned farms strips of woodland between overgrowth fields brushy roadsides or stream sides and patches of grass weeds and wildflowers individuals on the coastal southeast population will tend to breed in scrub communities, wooded back dunes, palmetto thickets, edges of maritime hammocks, hedges, yards, fallow fields, and old citrus groves. Wintering grounds include high grass, shrubby and overgrown pasture, and thickets, which is true because that's where I've been finding them, is in that high grassy um, area where there's a lot of um, these plants that they look like these long kind of cattail things with these little seedy things at the end so I see them eating that um, or overgrown grass I see them in there and eating little grass seeds and things so eastern breeders winter in shrubby or grassy habitats in Florida and in the northern Caribbean 
um, and the birds from south central U.S. winter in similar habitats in southern Mexico and Central America. So talking about food, we already kind of talked about that they eat seeds, so they do eat seeds most of the year, um, which makes them a frequent bird feeder visitor in the southeast through the winter time and switching to mostly insects in the breeding season in the summer when they head back north. They forage on the ground for seeds, which I have observed. Um, they do with the seeds of bristle grass, pigweed, wood sorrel, sponge, not sponge, spurge. <laughs> That'd be interesting, sponges. Um, panic grass, St. John's wort, sedge, dock, pine, rose, wheat, or fig. I have seen them eating fig from the fig trees. I have a picture of that as well. Um, during the breeding season in the summer, they catch various insects such as grasshoppers, weevils, other beetles, caterpillars, bugs, spiders, snails, wasps, and flies. Mm, I wish they were here in the summer to eat those wasps. I hate those things. <laughs> in addition to foraging on the ground, though, um, in breeding season, they also forage in marshes and in trees. I've mostly seen them on the ground or at the feeder, but I have seen them in the fig trees. Um, so the buntings will sometimes pull bugs from spider webs or even dive through a spider web to steal a spider's prey. Hmm, I would like to see that. I haven't seen that. So as far as nesting goes, if you're in an area that they do nest, um, painted buntings will tend to use dense foliage for nest sites and they usually choose a spot that's three to six feet off the ground, but sometimes it could be as high as 50 feet if there's no ve low vegetation. Common nest plants um, that they'll use are Spanish moss, mulberry, mesquite, elm, osage orange, green briar, oak, myrtle, and pine. Hmm. So their clutch size is usually about three to four eggs. Um, they usually do one to three broods. Uh, incubation is 11 to 12 days. Nesting period is nine days and their eggs are grayish or pale bluish white with fine speckles of brown and gray. So let's talk about behavior. The males will vigorously defend their territory, which can be about three acres wide. Hmm, that's a lot. So they will fight other males by pecking, striking each other with their wings, grappling, things like that. So their fights can be quite violent and ending with feather, uh, feather loss, wounds, and damage to their eyes. They could even kill the other birds sometimes. Sad. Um, a male may also dive and hit a flying female, driving her to the ground and pulling at her feathers as well. These birds are, they look so nice and innocent. <laughs> they can really, they don't really play around, wow. But when courting, however, the male goes to great lengths to woo his mate. So I guess they can be sweet when they want to be. <laughs> Among other displays, he spends his uh, he spreads his feathers like a miniature male turkey. I would like to see that. I would like to see a painted bunny um, spread his feathers out like a turkey. <laughs> I see my chickens do it, but I've never seen a songbird do that. So, um, so when the male does the turkey thing, um, the female will usually peck at the ground. And the species is usually monogamous, um, but occasionally you will see two females with one male um, in the same male's territory. So I hope you enjoyed this information about the painted bunting. Um, and you learned a little bit more about them. If you've seen a painted bunting or if you have buntings at your feeder right now, uh, give me a comment below and a like. And if this is one of your favorite birds to see at the feeder, let me know. Thanks, till next time guys.